Hello, a great welcome to Idea Statica tutorial. My name is Jarajan P. This is tutorial number four. Here I will demonstrate how to model and design a beam splice bolter connection. So let us start Idea Statica tutorial number four. So we'll start from a blank project. So let me just write down the name. This is synthesis. Synthesis structure. This is a P1 splice. One splice, and we'll keep the steel grid as 275, the bolt assembly M28.8, and the congruent grid C2530, and the splice design will be performed as per the Euro code. So just start with button. So let us start populating the different components of the connection. We'll add the member, and uh, this will be uh, the IP section. So we'll choose uh, IP 300. IP 300. Okay. And the material will be as 275. Okay, fine. So we'll keep all the parameters the same and let us add the second beam member to be spliced. So we'll keep the same IP300 and uh, the direction obviously we need to change. So beta in this case we'll set it as 180 degrees. 180 degrees. Okay. So so well, let us do one thing, let us keep them to as the the bearing set as the bearing member. Okay, so, so we have modeled both the beam components, the M1 and M2, to be spliced, each of IP300. So let us start defining uh, the splice plates, the web splice plate, all the all the three splice plates components. So first one, let us start adding first splice plate using the manufacturing operation. So we'll add splice so it is 8.8 .8. m20 bolts will use so, okay okay so as you can see that here that a uh, splice plate is automatically added here on uh, the beam flange so let us start editing the various parameters to suit our design so this will be SPL1. So we'll keep it as SPL1. Obviously, it's on the M1 beam M1 top flange. Okay, and the other member it is obviously is the M2 and the material is 275. And let us keep the thickness of say lesser one that's a 10 mm that is good enough for us. 10 mm. Okay, and uh, location will keep the same. The gap also will keep it as a 0 mm. And then uh, all the dimensions of the splice plate will be defined with respect to the member center line. And let us uh, start defining. As you can see, that all the details are relevant to the bolts and the plates are already displayed here. So as you start entering, please verify the dimensions whether they are properly changed or not. Okay, so let us uh, start changing B1. So we'll keep B1 as 150 for this problem. 150. And then B2 also will keep it as 150. So you can see that all the dimensions are getting updated. B2 is 150. Okay, so then uh, let us uh, start uh, providing uh, the offsets of offset 1 and offset 2, 2 will be set to 0. And here uh, let us uh, start just adding a backing plate. So here you can see that a plate is automatically added on the back side of this flange. So the thickness as usual, let us keep it as uh, same to the Flange splice plate that is a 10 mm, so we'll reduce it to 10 mm. Okay, and the offset for the plate will keep it as a say, for example, the 2 mm. Now, let us start defining the new positions of uh, the required positions of the anchor bolts. So, these are the M20 8.8 bolts. So, let us start furnishing the right dimensions. And here remember that all the bolt positions are referenced with respect to the member axis 
So let us start entering all these dimensions. So this will be, let us keep it as a, rather than 38, we'll keep it as a 40 and minus 40. So change it. So it's a 40. And then we have a minus 40. Minus 40. So you can see that obviously all these bold dimensions are now revised to 40 mm. Okay. And then let us start fixing the longitudinal dimensions. So in this case, we will keep the longitudinal dimensions as 50 and 60. So 50, 50 here and then 60. So we'll keep the regular pattern. So all other parameters will be the same. So as you can see that the bolt assembly as well as the splice plate dimensions for the flange splice plate, it is fixed. You can just have a look here. So these are flange splice plate and look here. We also have provided a backing plate here. So if it is not required, obviously we will delete it later. Okay, so you can also just rotate it. So on this side also you can see that there is a, a backing plate added on the other side of the beam flange. Okay, so now let us start defining the splice plate required for the bottom flange. So as the size as well as the configuration of the anchor bolt remain the same. So let us just start okay, copying SPL1. So, so and then start editing. So obviously we know that it is connected to the other side of the flange. So just to start editing. So this will be obviously easier. Uh, so for the bottom, it's not a top flange. So we'll keep it we'll change to the bottom flange and one bottom flange. So as you can see that it's automatically okay. All the required dimensions are being populated. So and all other dimensions will remain the same. So So you can see that we have just copied as PL1. So all the bolt positions and uh, the splice plate dimensions will re remain exactly the same. So let us just see that. So look here. So we have populated the bottom flange splice plate as well. And uh, we have also have added a backing plate on the bottom flange. So now let us start adding a web splice plate. Okay. So We'll just to add a manufacturing operation. So obviously this is splice. So now as you can see that automatically it has come on the top flange, but we want it on the web plate. Okay, so let us start editing the dimensions, the radius dimensions pertaining to the plate size as well as the anchor bolt configuration. So here it will be on the member M1, but it is not on top flange should be on the web so let us keep it on web one so as you can see okay it is uh, provided on on other side that's a the rear side or uh, in the idea static it is provided on the front side you can just display it okay it is already generated now we need to provide a plate on both sides we require a uh, web splice plate on both sides. So let us start adding all the required dimensions. So this should be already, this is for M2, connected to memory is M2 and the material is 275. And in this case, we'll keep the thickness a little bit lesser because it's a web splice plate. So we'll keep it as a item. And the location, okay, we'll keep the front, okay, and it is a the bolter configuration we have and then uh, let us uh, start providing okay the dimensions pertaining to the web plate so we'll keep b1 and b2 as 150 mm so we'll keep it as a 150 150 and this also will keep it as 150 mm 150 mm and regarding the offsets we'll keep the offsets as uh, Okay, that is measured from the profile adjust as minus 30 and minus 30 and that automatically defines the 
edges of the plate so minus 30 and minus 30 okay so that is already defined and you can if you if you want to have a clarification or to see the plate exactly let us just keep it on that so you can see that the plate is already defined over here so we have 150 150 and then minus 30 minus 30 so then let us uh, because we want to have a plate on the other side also so we, that will be generated through the backing plate so we'll keep the backing plate and ensure that it's uh, having the same thickness so we'll provide it as an 8 mm thick backing plate and uh, the offset will keep it as a 10 mm from the plate so there's a 10 okay and uh, let us uh, start defining the bolt configuration so this our uh, m28.8 and the reference will be the member x axis and uh, let us uh, start defining the bolt lines so the bolts will keep it as here uh, transverse because we have uh, one two three four rows so we need to define the locations so let us keep it as i say 25 25 25 50 25 50 okay that is defined for one row and let us uh, keep it as a uh, minus 25 because it's on the other side minus 25 and a minus minus 25 and a minus 50 okay so you'll find that uh, all the transverse positions are being properly okay defined and now let us uh, start defining the row position so we'll keep it as a 50 60 50 and 60 so these are regular arrangement so and all other parameters remain the same so as you can see we have properly defined the web price plate and also we have uh, provided all the locations of the boards as per the design so let us just have a look how the, how the arrangement looks like so you can see that uh, you can see that on the other side also we have uh, Okay, these are web splice plate and this is your flange splice plate. Okay, so and to see that here we have provided a backing plate also for the flange plate. So now it's the time that we start specifying what must be the load for which the splice to be de designed. So that can be easily incorporated through the load effects command. So let us start adding the loads. So let us uh, start providing the loads as uh, example here we have uh, we'll uh, try to keep it as a minus 40 here for the shear load so and regarding the moment we'll keep it as an my so at the splice section the design forces are there's a shear force of 40 kN and there is a moment of 80 kN meter that is already marked over here right so that is the complete definition of the model so let us start okay calculating the model and see whether uh, there is any space for optimization of the bolts okay so just press calculate so the summary of the results is shown here as you can see the bolts are stressed only to 60 percentage level so there is a space for optimization so let us see the summary of the bolts bolt forces so so as you can see, there is 59.3 uh, percentage, 59.3 percentage. So you can see that it is an extreme bolt that is on the web splice. So now coming to the bolts on the flange side, we find that the utility is on the order of say 40 to 45. So it does mean that let us try to optimize this model by deleting the backing plates and also reducing the number of bolts on the web plate so yeah let us uh, generate a new model so we'll just copy this okay so this is our synthesis structure one so where we will start uh, okay making the optimization so okay so let us start making it with the SPL1. So let us first start deleting okay, the backing plates okay, that is provided on the flange side. So we'll go to the SPL1. 
okay and as well one i will just uh, inactivate the backing plate so you can see that now there is no backing plate at all and while making any modification have a look on the production cost you can see that as the production cost go on reducing the model turns out to be an economical one so similarly let us start deleting uh, the backing plate for the spl2 okay so here again okay so now we don't have any backing plates for the flange splice plate okay so now let us uh, go down to spl3 that is basically the web splice so let us start reducing the number of boards plus let us accordingly reduce the size of the web splice plate so let us start making the required modifications so these are spl3 so first one is regarding okay the size so regarding stuff 150 obviously what we'll do is that we'll keep it say 100 mm so that uh, we can reduce the size of the plates and uh, obviously here we'll have a lesser number of boards so let us uh, provide the revised configuration of the boards so here we'll have only one row on each side so we'll keep it as a 50 okay so you can see that all the bolt assembly is defined so here we are having a smaller uh, web splice plate with a reduced number of boards so let us uh, start running calculating the model so press calculate So see that the production cost is only 73 euros. So look, it's a good optimization. We have uh, increased the utility from 60 to 90 percentage. So let us see which of the boards are critical in this present case. So we'll go for the check. And so here we'll press boards. So here again, we'll see which of the boards are critical in our case. So must be the same bolt obviously on the website. So let us see which bolt it is. So you can see that it is. Okay, it's the same bolt which is on the web splice. Instead of the earlier 60%, it is now 90%. And we have also, we can see that regarding the bolts on the flange side, there is an increase in the utility ratio from say 0.45 to 0.62. So overall, it is a good optimization where the production cost is reduced to 73 euros. So uh, the beauty of Idea Statica is that you can just go on running a large number of optimizations within a very short time and bring down the production cost. Okay, and uh, that's all. So thanks a lot for listening, and uh, please subscribe to the channel so that you will get the notifications as and when. Okay. The tutorials are being uploaded in the channel so thanks a lot